Okay, Leah, thank Hi. you for a great talk. Welcome to the, the chat sofa. Thanks. Um, so people joining on, us on the live stream probably just saw your talk, which was, uh, it's always incredibly insightful to have someone who works inside a big organization telling us kind of from the inside what it's like to go out and for something that people use every day. Uh, it's yeah. really great. Some people might not have seen the talk because they'll be watching it kind of later, this interview. Uh, so no big secrets. Okay. <laughs> um, you've had a fairly varied career. I mean, you've had a few startups yourself, right? Yes. And then joined Dropbox and kind of, yes. uh, yeah, lots of expertise. If you look back on your career and maybe for some uh, younger developers or new developers trying to get in and watching this being like, how do I do what she does? Mm -hmm. um, is there any points in your career when you've taken a step or a path or a decision where you're like, that was important for me to do that, that you could share with us? Yeah. Um, I've always sort of kind of kept my opportunities open and yeah. sort of tried to say yes more than say no. Um, I do have to say no sometimes <laughs> to things, but... Um, you, I think you'd be surprised when you say yes, um, how many sort of doors open. So one of the things I did that was I thought really important to my career was just I just showed up to things. Yeah. Um, when I first started out, I I moved to the Bay Area to San Francisco, and I just would show up. So if there was a meetup, a hackathon, I would just go um, and participate and be there and meet people. And Irregardless if you had someone to go with or you yeah. just turn up. Actually, I didn't yeah. know anyone yeah. when okay. I first moved <laughs> to the Bay I didn't know anybody. Um, one of the first meetups I went to was a microformats meetup of, you know, microformats and got to know the community there. And uh, that was great. So just going to different. Very nice. So you got inside city, yeah. of lots of different communities. And yeah. Then kind of found yeah. your feet. Yeah. That. Trying to think of some other ones. Yahoo Hack Day, long okay. time ago, yeah. back in the day. Um, very first like hack day I had ever heard of. Yeah. Um, one of the very first ones. Uh, what are some of the other events? But now nowadays it's so easy to, to show up to events. There's uh, meetup.com. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's a, a great tip is just go. Yeah, Just go yeah. and decisions will, yeah. will emerge and things yeah. happen. Yeah. Uh, I used to use upcoming.org, which is about to relaunch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, okay. so it launched um, and then got shut down okay. and they're about to relaunch upcoming.org. All right, so. exciting. Yeah. Look, look out for it. Um, there's been a lot of chatter today, and I've kind of heard it outside, but also on the stage about open source, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, is there anything that you think, or if there is something that is the biggest threat to the open source uh, community or development in open source at the moment, what would that be? Biggest threat to open source. So at Dropbox, I do work on sort of, we have an open source team, but it's not yeah. really like a team decided by management. It's kind of volunteer. Okay. In the same way that open source is volunteer, yeah. uh, Dropbox, the participation in the open source team is volunteer. And the problem at Dropbox, I think we've seen, is our engineers feeling comfortable enough to put themselves out there. Yeah, okay. um, and it, it's always awkward to have someone else looking at your code and give you feedback. And it's hard to communicate in sort of a positive way um, and to build things um, kind of constructively and yeah. um, so I, I think that would probably be the biggest problem is um, just making everyone feel welcome um, learning how to give uh, or giving good feedback on open source projects without being um, you know unnecessarily harsh or I guess that's often the, often a problem right people really want to critique well but sometimes yes. as people are so kind of they're just trying something and, right. and it needs a bit more support than, than right. critique right and yeah. there's all sorts of different levels um, of involvement in open source and um, making sure that, you know, there really is that community aspect to it and, and yeah. fostering that community is really important. Yeah, that's nice. I imagine, the, yeah, sounds like there's a good community inside of Dropbox for it. We're trying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're working Can on it. Try. Um, but in the, way that in the way that pace changes and lots of the tools we use change and kind of our ideas about skills that we need change, if you cast your, back, your mind back like five years, <laughs> so <laughs> lots, lots have happened since, is there anything you learnt then as a skill which you think in maybe two years time will feel completely redundant? Completely or maybe already redundant. feels redundant? Oh, I've already had skills go yeah. completely what redundant. Um, my first, uh, when I was in college, I was studying multimedia design. Does that even exist anymore? <laughs> no idea. Like my flash <laughs> development skills maybe okay, <laughs> completely yeah, they're obsolete. Out. <laughs> they're out. <laughs> yeah, totally gone. Um, try in the future, um, I actually switched recently from doing uh, server-side development to doing mobile. Okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, <laughs> thinking, I, I actually, since joining Dropbox, I've gone back a little bit to yeah. doing server-side stuff. For, but for about two years, I only wrote Objective-C for iPhone apps. And how did that feel? 
Uh, it was nice. It was yeah. nice to have a change. Yeah. I really liked it. It was a challenge and it was different. Yeah, um, but yeah so I like both. I like doing service. I like yeah. change. I like trying different things. I'm, I'm actually really excited about the Apple Watch and Watch Kit. So I'm excited <laughs> to try something different. Exactly. Again. New new parameters yeah. off again. Yeah. Um, and you're out in San Francisco. Yep. You've been there for a while, I think. Eight years. Eight years. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like you've been part of a lot of different communities. If you look at the, the JS community there, um, is there things going on there that you think maybe aren't known or kind of could be influential for the wider JS community across the globe? Sure. What share? I hear about a lot um, in San Francisco and probably uh, we're going to actually hear about it today at or today or tomorrow yeah. here at the conference, web components. Okay, um, yeah. People are talking yeah. a lot about that. So I'm very excited to, to yeah, hear more about. Yeah, I think that's, about that's going to be a big hit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, one last question before we release you from the magical stage on the sofa. Sure. Um, you had carte blanche and you could change anything about JavaScript. Oh, change anything about JavaScript. What would that one thing be? That's a really tough question. <laughs> it's the oh, sneaky I one in the end, right? Yeah, yeah. Th yeah. I, I wish I had time to prepare because I actually, I don't know. I work with so many languages, right? So yeah. I work well in Python and Objective C. I and mean, you can pick JavaScript. another language if you like. I think um, there's a lot of people. That no, I, it's just language. hard for me because they're also different to think of. There are the good things and the bad things in each language. One thing I would change about JavaScript. It's a really tough question. I'm like totally stumped. That's okay. You can you can answer on Twitter later if you like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Give you the grace. Yeah, um, there's nothing that I hate. Like some languages have things that I just hate. I'm like, oh, I wish they didn't do that. But that's um, I mean, that's a good thing for a language. I have a one people. thing that bothers me. Yeah. It's more of like a implementation thing. Is when there's too much chaining. So uh -huh. people like to chain methods together in JavaScript. But sometimes I get a little lost in like the third or fourth thing that's just chained too much together. To I'm like, it's like. Yeah compounding the results in some way that I'm like, ah, so don't do that. That's <laughs> more of like a style thing. Now we all know. Yeah. Don't do yeah, that. Save it out to a variable with a, like a nice name to it. And then then keep then you can keep chaining after that. But you know, every once Good in a documentation, while. Good like, documentation. Less Heads chain. up a little. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of the things about Objective-C that people hate are those really long method names, right? And I actually really like them because <laughs> nobody <laughs> writes comments. But if you write this really long method name that's like draw a box with color and corner radius, you know, it's like very explicit, it's but there, you know, in JavaScript there. it might be something like you know, draw draw a box and then a number four. And you're like, what does that even mean? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I guess when you're switching between languages a lot, like uh, yeah, it's it's more tricky when the documentation gets more specific and colloquial almost for the for the language. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I actually like that there's different styles of documentation for languages, but certain things or certain languages like JavaScript depend on comments and, and yeah. proper variable names to sort of yeah. um, stay sane. So good advice yeah. and uh, lovely to hear from you. We're going to let you go. We've had okay. a great talk and thank you for having another chat to the live stream. And uh, yeah, enjoy thanks the rest for having of the day me. And okay, tomorrow. thanks. Yeah. Catch up on time zones. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, live stream. Uh, we will see you later on. Have a nice break. <laughs>